we're starting off 2024 the best way. Gracias a ustedes, cada uno de ustedes, think every single one of you who made this possible. I can finally say, orgullosamente puedo decir, we have finally reached 100K subscribers. Woo! Yes, I'm so ready for this year. Thank you guys. The goal, we're going to keep it going. This is just the beginning, and this is dedicated to you guys. Las amo. Happy 2024. Happy New Year's. No manches. I'm literally so freaking excited to be back. Eh, estuvimos de vacaciones. Ahorita vamos a platicar sobre todo. But what is up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of Suelta la Lengua con Itati. ¿Cómo están ustedes? Déjenme saber en los comentarios qué hicieron. ¿A qué se van a proponer? What are you guys um, wanting this year? Quiero saber todo. Déjenme saber en los comentarios. Antes que nada, quiero agradecerles a ustedes por todo el apoyo que me dieron en the last three episodes. Realmente que estoy tan agradecida. Four episodes, porque había uno donde estaba yo solita, the introduction, and then we had three beautiful guests. La neta que me siento muy, muy agradecida. I quickly want to talk to you guys about cómo hoy en la mañana me desperté y dije como qué fregón se siente poder levantarme, arreglarme y decir voy en camino a mi podcast. Algo que realmente I still haven't soaked in completely. Algo that I still don't completely believe. I, I, I don't know. I feel like it's literally a dream because when I walk in here, it's literally like a dream. So it's very, I don't know, it gets me emotional. So me levanté en la mañana and I was like, Damn, dude, so many, like, we're starting off the year so good. So, so many good things are happening already. Y estoy muy agradecida porque todo esto está pasando gracias a ustedes. So, honestly, thank you, thank you to every one of you that has supported the channel until now. Y lo más que tenemos eh, para ustedes este año 2024. But let's get right into it, ladies. I spent my uh, New Year's in Mexico. Fuimos a Mazatlán, and then I headed out to Durango. And I actually met my fiance's family for the first time. Y dije, o llego bien santita, o llego y les enseño que soy bien pinche borracha y que les enseño quién soy yo. Dije, bueno, we're going to be ourselves, ¿verdad? Es lo más importante eso en el mundo, be you. And so I get there. Well, first of all, Mazatlán, we've been there already. So, este, llegamos y fuimos a la playa, which is never cold there. And, um... We went clubbing. Hicimos un desmadre que la neta le dije a mi fiance, no quiero que ni mires la cuenta del banco. Le dije, esa madre va a estar negativa. Porque uno se sintió como millonario allá, no sé de dónde pensaba uno. Pero I had such a good time. Durango, I met his family. We had an amazing, amazing time. Celebramos el cumpleaños de mi suegra, her 50th birthday. And literally, it feels like they're my own family. Like, son igualitos que yo bien desmadrosos. Les encanta el perreo. Les encanta todo el show. So, it was just such a beautiful feeling. I'm back here in California. Mi mamá se quedó. So, ella no está acompañándome a mí hoy. Hoy estoy solita aquí en el estudio. Eh, so, it, it feels different, pero sé que me está apoyando desde sea donde sea. Uh, very quickly, los, las metas que tenemos para este año aquí en Suelta la Lengua. Eh, I feel like I want to connect more with you guys. I really want to have you guys involved in this show. Um, tenemos diferentes técnicas that we want to have here um, on this show. For example, les platiqué on my TikTok a little bit about how we want to do chismes and we want to talk about segments um, where you guys literally spill the tea. You guys literally spill the chisme. And si ustedes no han visto mis videos on TikTok where we, donde yo iba en vivo y hace cuenta les decía, a ver, por Instagram, mándenme sus números de teléfono, mándenmelos. Y cuando me los manden, yo me voy a meter, yo les voy a marcar y dame el chisme. Dame un pinche chisme que hasta me quiera desmayar. Algo que hasta sienta como que la policía me va a llegar y me va a llevar. Like something crazy. And you guys love it. So I was like, what better idea than to literally have you guys and your story on the podcast. Like, imagínate. Todo ese chisme y hasta lo metemos aquí adentro. No manches, la gente ahora sí va a explotar. Esta va a ser caso cerrado. Este va a ser este, la Rosa de Guadalupe en un podcast. Like, this shit's about to freaking explode. So, va a ser un segment. We're going to get a little bit into it in just a few moments. So, first and foremost, 
Si ustedes quieren salir en lo que es suelta la lengua, you guys have the opportunity to finally share your story. Si te quieres desahogar, quieres quemar a alguien, quieres de a tiro reunar o no sé, quieres hacer un desmadre, you've come to the right podcast, all right? Tengo yo eh, un chisme submission form, which you can also find it in the description down below. Um, es un link where you basically fill out a form and you just tell us, And you can also pick if you want to be anonymous. So, si no quieres que compartamos tu nombre, si tú quieres hacer este anónima, no quieres que nadie sepa la historia, pero vas a poner los nombres de los demás con mucho gusto. You basically give us a little, like, rundown of what your story is about. Danos, like, that little context. Y si la historia está perra, te vamos a marcar. Hey, ¿cómo que su, tu tío se metió con la vecina? A ver, dime cómo fue ese show. So, we really want to get you guys more involved. And I feel like a lot of podcasts... Siempre es como así como, and we'll still continue to do como entrevistas, being with your favorite influencers, but we also want to involucrarlos a todos ustedes. We want to make this, like I said, your weekly addiction, something that you're like, man, van a compartir mi historia, quiero que sientan como que estamos en una llamada de FaceTime. So, estoy súper emocionada para esta nueva, nueva etapa en el podcast. And you guys can find that chisme submission form, como les digo, in the description down below. So, if you have a chisme, tú la que me estás mirando, ve ahorita and put in your submission. You can be anonymous. It's totally up to you. And for today's episode, we have something, un little como una entradita, haz de cuenta como algo para que miren más o menos cómo va a ir el show. We pulled out some of the stories that you guys sent over to us. Unas historias que usted, ustedes nos mandaron. Yo no las ha leído. Jess, Jess las leo. Jess las va a poner ahorita en la pantalla. Yo voy a reaccionar a estas historias. Y voy a darles mi input, lo que yo pienso. Ahorita van a ver the organic freaking, like, vamos a ver. Let's see. So, starting next week, muchachas, lo que vamos a hacer también, vamos a, ahorita voy a estar nomás leyendo unas submissions. Pero next week, we're going to start giving you guys a call. Hey, ¿cómo que dijiste esto y el otro? So next week vamos a comenzar las llamadas. Ahorita vamos a estar reaccionando a unas historias. So be ready. Agarra tus palomitas, tus hachiros. Agarra una pinche taza de baño y un pañal porque ahorita nos vamos a cagar. So let's get started. A ver, let's, let's get into it. Um, let's hear the first chisme. A ver, first one dice, tuve un sugar daddy y resultó que era mi primo, el primo de mi ex. Bro, what the hell? Un sugar daddy que resultó que era primo de mi ex. Bueno, pues ahí no hay pedo. No es tu primo. El que no es tu primo, pues allá es lo que tú quieras. Un sugar, imagínate. Dice, se resultó que era el primo de mi ex. Bueno, pues mientras haya billete que te compre, pero que te compre lo bueno. No nomás que te anda comprando lonche o te esté dando para eh, una bebida. o No, pídele carros, pídele ropa. No nomás digan sugar daddy, pero te está comprando lo de la sección de dólar en la Walmart. No, cuando es un sugar daddy te está comprando Lamborghinis, te está comprando realmente lo grande. Que valga la pena el dicho de que es el primo de tu ex. Ah, pues es tu ex, ¿quién importa? Imagínate, tu ex pues le vale madre, le anda haciendo su propio rollo. So fuck it, tú disfruta. Alrighty, dice, basically, one of my uncles who will call uncle A, okay, so uncle A, so su, su tío A, Uh, was dating this was dating this one woman, right? But then he found out my other uncle, who we call Uncle B, started talking to Uncle B's woman. Esta madre está más confundida que un pinche riddle. A ver. Basically, one of my uncles who's, we'll call, okay, so Uncle A was dating this one woman, and then he found out my other uncle. Okay, Uncle A was dating, puta madre, esta madre está más complicada que mi vida, hijo. A ver, um, started talking to, muchachas, agarren la onda, no manchen. Si van a mandar una historia, ponle por de menos un nombre, Omar, Carlos, ponle algo, esto de letras me está confundiendo. To the Uncle B's woman and the woman left Uncle A. Oh, ya entendí. So the lady that was with Uncle A, ahora anda con Uncle B. No, pues quiere quedar entre familia. Ella como que quiere quedar ahí todavía en ese rollo. Pero yo quiero saber, my question is, and we need to get deep into this. Oh, and by the way, ustedes déjenme saber en los comentarios cuál historia de que las voy a contar ahorita. Which one do you want to know more about so that on next week's episode, we're going to give them a call. Y le voy a decir, a ver, me explicaste esto, pero dame más detalle. Like, I literally want to know more about it. How did this start? How did you find out? How do you even know about this? All right? Pero in this case, how don't they find out? I mean, la vieja, pues, la que es perra es perra, ¿verdad? Pero how don't they find out? Like, porque los tíos, from my understanding, 
ellos son los que, uh, comparten las fotos de que yo ando platicando con esta y déjame verla, pero nada de pendejo la, los dos, ¿verdad? Because they knew something was going on. So I feel like ahí estuvo como un trío pasando, or I don't know what the hell, but there's no way that Uncle A didn't find out Uncle B was with that woman. La mejor cosa, la mejor manera que puede reaccionar, o se hacen pendejos ellos, o se hacen ciegos. I don't know. I feel like this is just something that is common sense. ¿Cómo no te vas a dar cuenta cuando uno anda con la misma? Especialmente en la familia. Esto me huele a un Mickey Mouse, me huele a una tranza. I don't know, man. But we're going to keep on reacting here. Contar la vez que mi ex mejor amiga se metió con mi hombre y yo me metí con su papá. What the fuck? ¿La herencia? ¿Nada de mensa? La que se quede con la herencia no es nada de mensa. Se metió con su papá porque su amiga se metió con el papá de la... Damn, you guys are some crazy ass people. If I were to tell you guys a crazy ass story about me... Nah, I can't talk about it on here. Fuck that, me voy a quemar yo misma. But, ¿cómo? O sea, la muchacha obviamente le dolió que su amiga se metió con su ex. Entonces ella se metió con su papá. Pero su papá de la amiga, ya, yeah, huh. I think es la mamá de la amiga. No creo que va a ser la mamá, el pap digo, el papá del, de la ex, del ex, right? Is it, a, is it a friend? Jess, what do you think? Con el papá, con el, se metió con el papá de la amiga o del ex, de la amiga. Damn, dude, qué sinvergüenza. Y el papá también ahí que andaba también de camote flojo, porque él bien que quiso también. Pues ni modo, dile a tu amiga que de aquí en adelante tú eres su madrastra, que a ti te va a respetar porque tú eres la que ahora le va a tener que decir mamá, madrastra, y tú te vas a quedar con todas las cosas de ella. Sorry for you, pero como tú también andabas de, de pinches patas abiertas, pues ahora se van a quedar con todo lo tuyo. All right, let's see. Mi tía cheated on my uncle with her stepdad. She didn't only cheat, but, but effed her stepdad, and the chisme gets even better for the re, for revenge. I'm either dumb at reading, or... Como que estoy media pendeja, como que estoy comenzando el año con tener que ir a la escuela. My dad cheated on my uncle with her stepdad. She didn't only cheat, but fucked her stepdad, and the chisme gets even better for revenge. My uncle and her dad... What the... F Am I reading that right? <gasps> okay. Okay, okay, okay. Esta madre hasta a mí me va a traumar. She didn't only cheat, but fucked her stepdad, and the chisme gets even better for revenge. My uncle and her dad fucked and took a video and sent it to my tía and the stepdad. <gasps> Aquí hubo un tren. What the fuck? Okay, esto me está dando hasta calor. Like, I don't know if you can tell in the camera, but me estoy poniendo bien roja. So, el papá se echó al tío y le mandaron una foto a la tía. Imagínate la tía escuchando eh, la misa por YouTube, le llega un mensaje y es el papá echándose a la tía. Bro, that's such a sin. Like, when you're going to get revenge, métete, no sé, con la que más le duela, pero con el tío. Ok, el papá siempre tuvo interés. Que no tiene nada de malo. Si quisiera, pues no hay de problema, ¿verdad? But I, like, I can't picture my head like my tío. And my, no, I shouldn't even be picturing that in the first place. But what the? F How? So, the t so to get revenge for the tía, pues se echó el tío al papá. That's so wrong on so many fucking levels. Imagínate, el pinche viejo allí con razón camina todo rosado, el hijo de su chingada madre, pues porque... How? Like, how do you go to family parties and now you just look at each other like, hey, ya te bañaste? Like, I vengo. You know, like, how? Dude, that's fucking wrong. I don't know. I feel like these stories, and I really hope that this one's made up, because esta madre, I feel like this story, we're going to have to get more in depth in the next week's episode, porque realmente I need to know the context. I need to know what the fuck is going on. So this, this is, a, this is, it just gets crazy every time. A ver, let's see. Um, dice I'm willing to tell two stories So esta muchacha nos va a decir dos historias Nos va a decir dos La primera My mom called my dad Teniendo relaciones con una señora After his shift at Wendy's Na Rudy Valencia No This is why So la cachó Lo torció la movida En el drive Wait After his shift at Wendy's In the drive thru So, cachó a su papá teniendo una... Dude, I feel like, okay, all of these stories are about infidelidades y pinche engaño. 
si tú realmente quieres engañar a tu pareja, ¿para qué juegas de su chingada madre estás con ellos? Like, ¿Para qué? ¿Para qué vas a andar en esos juegos? ¿Para qué vas a andar jugando con una persona con los sentimientos? I've seen, and I'm going to tell you this, yo he visto cuando hay personas o hay muchachas que a mí me han dicho, oh, yo me metí con uno casado, yo me metí con uno que, tenga, que tenía esposo, que tenía hijos, o oh, él tiene mucho dinero, me quedé con él. Like, bravo, felicidades por ser puta. Like, that's not an orgullo. Tú metiéndote con uno casado, you're not, you're not like the bad bitch. You're not like chingona for doing that. Because he's not going to take you serious. No tomó en serio a su esposa que te vaya a tomar en serio a ti. You know, el hombre que no, el hombre que hace esa mensada realmente... Como no la valoró a ella, tampoco te va a valorar, valorar a ti. ¿Tú crees que la a ti te mira como, ay, la conocí y con ella sabiendo que yo tengo esposa. Ah, yo quiero estar con ella para toda mi vida. Tú, a ti te vamos a decir la resbaladía porque tú te resbalas bien fácil. O sea, tú te entregas con cualquier persona y eso no te lleva nada bonito. Todas las personas que les gusta decir que te metiste con un casado, el mensaje para ti es, eres una mensa, eres, no es un orgullo decir esas cosas, porque igual como le hiciste a esta persona, aunque el viejo hizo lo que hizo, tú por soltera que te metiste, a ti te va a pasar lo mismo. Y si no es contigo, lo pagan los hijos. Si tú, no, si tú estás en tu relación y estás bien, pero algún tiempo sientes como que ya no quieres estar allí, salte, no tienes que estar allí. No, ten, no sientas como que tienes que... Tienes que sen hacer sentir a alguien mal because you're not, I don't know, like, it just doesn't make sense in my head. Like, how are you going to go and do stupid stuff like that and then expect them to still treat you good? But then when they do something to you, you get offended. So it's like, haz lo que, no hagas lo que tú no quisieras que te hicieran a ti. All right? Next story dijo, mi papá arregló papeles uh, for a kid he has outside of marriage and my mom doesn't know. Inge a su madre, su papá le arregló papeles a un niño que es su hijo que su mamá ni sabe. Dude, I like want to talk to these people. Quisiera tenerlos aquí en el cuarto y decir, a ver, tú comienza. ¿Cómo es que su pa tu papá se echó a tu tío? Like, what the actual fuck is going on in this mundo? Por eso vivimos, vivimos en un mundo del demonio, del diablo. ¿Por qué? Porque cómo es posible que el papá se esté metiendo con el tío. Hasta piojo me está creciendo. Dice, vamos a ver, muchachas, I feel like these stories are literally crazy and this is nothing compared to the over 2,000 submissions we've received. Eso sí te voy a decir. We've gotten over 2,000 submissions. Y todos los días it's going up and up and up. Si tú vas a mandar un submission diciendo, hola, Tati, te quiero mucho, te voy a bloquear a la chingada. Eso no es un chisme, es una pendejada. Yo también te amo, pero no andes jugando conmigo. Aquí queremos mi tote. Y la razón que hago este video yo es porque les estoy dando como el preview. What to expect? What is going to happen? What are we doing next? Like, get what is going to happen? And I feel like you guys need to mentally prepare yourself. Mentalmente prepárate, porque aquí hasta tu nombre va a salir. A ti, tú la que me estás viendo, te van a quemar. Así que tú ponte las pilas y ponte a quemar a alguien, porque si tú no quemas a alguien, te van a quemar a ti. Pero eso sí te digo. Yo siento como que en este mundo el chisme está bien perro. En TikTok, ¿qué es lo más chingón? El, el, el chisme. You know what? Should we talk about this? Yo nunca me he metido en una polémica en social media. Nomás ha visto, oh my God. I don't know if I should say this, but fuck it. I'm going to say it. But whatever, ¿verdad? You guys know how there's like a lot of tea channels on TikTok. And there's like a lot of people in specific that do like a lot of tea. Hay unas personas tan idiotas, tan pendejas. I'm going to tell you about this one time that Poncho, you guys know him from TikTok, posted me on his freaking um, thing. Este muchacho, bro, le vamos a mandar gotas para los ojos. But what's it called? He literally posted, so some girls sent him, and it's not really Pancho's fault. I'm going to say that right now. Because él nomás dijo lo que una muchacha le mandó. Pero para que miren cómo comienzan los mitotes. Um, it was like about two, like a month, no, like two months ago, I was in Fresno, and I was going back to my house in Bakersfield. Y una muchacha, so we were, I'm so bad at explaining stories. We were coming back home. And we saw a car accident. Un, un carro le pegó a un SUV y el carro dio vuelta like this, not, not flipped over, but like this in circles. And the freeway was going this way and he faced this way. So he was on the opposite way now, facing the opposite way. Entonces, los carros se frenaban, hubo humo, like it was crazy, dude. Entonces, I've, my mom has always been scared for me to pull over in accidents because she said, she's always said like, Tati, what if they're drunk and they have a gun? Like, what if they have this and they hurt you? Like, you can't pull over because you don't know what they'll do to you. But when I saw that accident, I was like, dude, if that was my mom or my brother, I would want someone to stop. 
right? So when I when that happened, it happened like five seconds in front of me, and then I pulled like on the side of it, and I was like, dude, no mind. She's like, the guy was bleeding from his head, and so I pulled over. My mom was mad at me. She was in the car, but I was like, sabes qué, me voy a bajar. Like I'm sorry, but I have to help him. He was in the middle of the freeway. Cars were literally passing him. Someone was gonna hit him. His lights were all off. It was dark. So what do I do? Me paré al lado, and I got off. Dude, me arriesgué. Me metí en medio del freeway y lo bajé del carro. I literally got him off of the car. He was walking. What happened? He was very drunk. Era un mexicano. Muy, muy borracho, and he was bleeding from his head. Con decirles, muchachos, that a chunk from his freaking head back here, it was off. He was bleeding. So I got, I had a sweater, and I literally put it on his head, and I was going like this, y le dije, señor, oh, dude, not the ambulance passing by right now. Está pasando. So um, my friend was with us, le digo cacas a mi friend, and cacas called the ambulance and called the cops. And I was holding it right here, and I know pro people are probably going to see in the video, he thought you're not supposed to touch him or nothing. I'm sorry, dude, but I literally told the guy, you know what, you need to come out of here. Like, he was drunk, and he's the one that hit the, the SUV guy, le pegó al, al del Amazon. So entonces, the guy only spoke Spanish. He se bajó, and he was sitting in la, I sat him down right here, and I was holding this right here, y él me dijo a mí, he, you know, like those deals that are drunk, but they're conscious of what's happening? Like, they're drunk as fuck, but they know what's going on. Y él entonces me dijo, ¿me puedes subir a tu carro y me llevas? Like, llévame, llévame, yo no quiero, no tengo papeles, like, no quiero estar aquí. Le dije, señor, yo no, like, yo lo puedo ayudar hasta aquí, pero yo ya meterme con la ley, le digo, yo ya no puedo ahí. My mom got off, y mi mamá como que le tocó el corazón, the guy, because he, he reminded my mom of, like, her brother. And what's it called? Yeah, we called the cops, we called the ambulance. Y luego Cacas me pasó a mí el teléfono. I was speaking to her, a la lady. Le dije, ¿qué es lo que había visto? Y me dijo, can you wait there until we get there? And I'm like, yeah, of course. All right, this is where the chisme comes in. The traffic turned into one lane. The very far left lane, the fast lane. All the cars were passing. And I saw this white car that recorded me and screamed my name. Y yo dije, oh, like, they know me. Okay, pasaron. Tell me why the fuck. I don't know if it was that person or if it was someone else. Le mandan el video a Pancho y le mandan un mensaje diciendo, Itati just got in a car accident. Um, you need to post this, look, or something like that. Uh, Itati just got in a car accident uh, here in the freeway. Uh, something. I don't know. Pero el point is, dio el chisme a lo puro pendejo. She didn't even know what was going on. She didn't even know if I crashed. She didn't even know what. Pero para que miren cómo los chismes se hacen. So then, what's it called? Pancho posted it on his TikTok. And after that happened, uh, my brother, my uncles were calling me. Tati, are you okay? What happened? Because they took a video of when I was in front of the car or when I was, like, by by the, the rink cuando estaba parada where the car accident was. So it looked like I got in a car accident. I don't know if you guys know this, but I had a black Tahoe. Now I have a white GMC. And the reason why I'm talking about that is because when the accident happened, I had I had the GMC for, like, three days. Apenitas lo había comprado. People in the comments of that video were talking about, oh, it's because she's always drinking and driving. Finally, she crashed. Finally, something happened to her. Um, people were talking about, um, ¿qué más decían? Oh, fíjate cómo no le duró el carro. Like, oh, um, that car didn't last. Like, they were saying so many negative things to me, dude. Like, damn, that's when I realized, like, obviously there's always more good than bad, but that's when I realized the amount of hate someone can have in their heart. So I seen that video, and I got so pissed off, dude. Um, when I was talking to the guy at the scene when it happened, I asked for his name. I asked him, like, if I can call his family members. I acted as if he was like a brother. Why? Because, like I said, I would want someone to help my brother if he was in that situation. Yes, he was a drunk driver, but whether, whatever the situation is, you want to contact their families, right? So I did what I had to do. The guy that was in the SUV se bajó and he started screaming at him, but the guy didn't speak Spanish, so I was translating for him. And I was like, hey, dude, like, the guy isn't conscious. Like, whatever you're screaming at him, he's not even going to know what you're saying. So then, what's it called? I made a video on TikTok, and I started talking about how, how much hate someone can have to spread false rumors like that. I had my uncles calling me, my brother calling me, my older brother. My dad even called me. And he was like, Tati, are you okay? Like, what happened? ¿Por qué te accidentaste? Dude, I didn't even get in a car accident. You have my family members getting worried. You have people fucking worried. As Imagine my mom wasn't with me at, at that time, and she was, like, in Mexico or somewhere, and she sees that. Like, you can, I don't know. To me, that that's when it, where it made me realize que los chismes se pueden hacer a lo puro pendejo. And I see that a lot on social media. 
It's a very common topic. A lot of people, um, ba- unfortunately, a lot of people are recognized by drama. And there's a lot of people recognized by cheesemas. I don't like to be recognized by that. I don't want to be recognized or known as someone that was made or someone that is who they are because of cheesemas. But I feel like all these cheese channels that are on TikTok, a lot of people don't realize how you can really affect people's mental health. Yes, muy importante. And not just talking about the social media world, but talking about, like, in general, when you create a chisme, when you create a problem with your family, cuando tú haces un chisme con tu familia, tú no sabes realmente cómo dañas a la persona mentalmente. You don't know the damage you can cause to them. The damage or what happened to me because of that situation, that that video in particular that they posted, I felt a lot of anger in me and I felt a lot of like, like sadness and just like people literally commenting, finally something happened to her. Finally she crashed. Um, the amount of people just wishing bad upon me made me realize que como hay gente buena, hay gente mala, pero rete mala, dude. Um, there's just been so many things that I have never even discussed publicly on my social media that has happened to me that sometimes scares me um, of me being by myself. You'll never catch me at a store of me being by myself. Nunca me vas a encontrar en una tienda, ningún lugar sola, porque hay personas que me han querido hacer cosas. Hay personas que me han querido hacer daño. Y no nomás porque soy um, public figure, not just because I'm in this position, but because there's people that just generally don't like me. I had also seen this other comment of people like talking about, oh, I know Tati from high school. She's so fucking rude. She's never had friends. You don't fucking know me. I looked up the girl. She's like 50. Probably her daughter was commenting from her page. I don't even know who she was. A lot of people are always going to have hates towards you. And the majority of the time why people have hate towards you is because they can't accept the success in your life. And they can't, they can't accept or be happy because you're in the position where they want to be. And that's just the reality of it. I've learned to be happy with myself and I'm happy with everything I've done in life. But I've also accepted that there's going to be a lot of people who are not going to accept it. And that's not my problem. When someone's not happy with the life you're living, that's not your issue. When there's going to be people in this world who are literally going to talk down on you. Te van a querer tumbar. Te van a, que van a querer hablar mal de ti. There's people in this world that are going to do have so much hate towards you. And all you can do is literally be sure about yourself and go on with your day. Because it's up to you how good you want your day to be. From when, from the moment you wake up, if you are happy, your day is good. You wake up moody, depressed, sad, your day is bad. You are in control of your emotions. You're in control of yourself. Something, algo nuevo también de, de que les quiero comentar sobre mí es que I'm going to start taking therapy. And therapy is not for crazy people. And I'm going to say that right now. The reason why I'm doing therapy is because I've never had hate towards anyone. I've never had, um, nunca sentido como que tengo que ir por like, oh, estoy loca, porque la terapia no es para la gente loca. It's not. When you ask for therapy, you're asking for happiness. You're asking for freedom. You're asking for peace. You just want someone to be there for you and understand you. Yo nomás voy, la intención mía que voy a tener your therapy es para que, Si yo en algún momento me siento como muy encerrada o quiero platicar de algo or I'm just stuck with a certain point in my life, I just want to get that clarification. I just want to know if I'm doing that right or not. I'm not going because I feel crazy because that's not what it is. And the reason why I keep repeating that, a lot of people misjudge therapy for only people who are crazy, only people who are not there, only people who it's not. La terapia es lo que yo siento que everybody needs because a lot of people are so stuck in a, in like their life is like this. You're stuck in a freaking circle. You need to open yourself a bit. You need to live happy. You can't be living life competing with people. Cuando tú, cuando tú amas lo que haces, you're not looking at other people and their success. You're happy where you're at. You want to be in that position? All right, let's work for it. But don't look at it as like, I need to be higher than this person because this person's nothing compared to me. You living your life competing with people isn't going to get you far. And I'll tell you that right now. And another thing, we turned this into a chisme to like a therapy session, for real. Porque hay muchas personas que también miran mis videos because of a lot of shit that I say as like related to um, self-love, como amarte, como hacer feliz con ti misma. Dude, acéptate. Like tú, la que me estás mirando en la cámara, acéptate. Tú como estás, acéptate porque tú tienes lo que otras personas no tienen. 
yo no le pido nada más a Dios porque yo tengo mis manos, mis pies, mi salud, yo tengo mi nariz, yo tengo mis ojos. Con el simple despertar en la, ma en la mañana estoy bendecida y no ocupo nada más. Tú ahorita la vida que tú vives es la vida que otros le están orando tanto a Dios por tener. No puedes pedirle más a Dios porque lo, lo que tú tienes ahorita es suficiente. Porque yo sé que si Él te fuera a quitar un pedacito lo que tienes, le vas a pedir que te lo regrese. Sometimes we don't really value the life we have and we don't value the stuff we have and is given to us because we're used to it. But we need to start learning how to value it. And we have to start learning how to um, just take over it. Like you are capable of so many things in this world. And the best tip that I can give you, another question that I get a lot, Itati, how is it that you started all of this, social media, influencer, all of this? What is the best tip you can give me? Do not ask a single person for fucking advice. No, scratch that. No, not that. The, the, what I meant is the best tip that you can give to, that I can give you if you want to start to, you know, social media or everything. Don't ask people whether it's a good, like, ¿cómo te explico? Let's see. I've said this before, and I'm trying to see how to word it perfectly. I know how to say it in Spanish. I'll say it in Spanish. Nunca, nunca le preguntas a la gente, ¿está muy loca la idea? Is my idea too crazy? Because in reality, you're going to realize when you start doing what you love and when you start doing that crazy idea, no one's going to be there. No one's going to be there. Todos van a hacerse como una distraction. No one's going to be there to support you. As soon as you are the person you've always wanted to be, and now you're this big-ass person, te salen primos, te salen tías, te salen amigos, te salen todos. El otro día, cuando, bueno, cuando yo estaba en México, me había dicho una prima, me dijo, ay, me dijo ella que es tu prima. I don't even know who that bitch is. Like, I don't even know who she is. You know, and all of a sudden, I'm her cousin. But when you're going through the worst, cuando tú estás pasando, and I've told you guys this before, cuando yo estaba pasando por una hemorragia, ahí me di cuenta quién realmente está conmigo, quién realmente le importo. Because I've talked about this, and it can literally be another video, another episode where I literally go in depth, and my fiance will be here with me because he witnessed it all. No one other than my mom, my fiance, my suegra, And my dad that called me, those are the only four persons that checked up on me when I literally was going to die. Nobody else called me. Nobody. Pero qué tal cuando ya dices, when you say all of these accomplishments, no hombre, todos te están felicitando, todos te están diciendo todas estas cosas. You know what I'm saying? Like, you learn when you go through struggles, you learn who's there for you. And I've learned to be... Um, Like, even though that, and I know a lot of people are probably going to comment down below, like, y Tati, nosotros como tus supporters, pues como chingados llegamos al hospital el día de la hemorragia. No, ustedes yo los amo y los quiero, porque realmente the people who are here watching me and supporting me have brought me to where I am right now. And yo realmente estoy muy agradecida con ustedes, and I really, really want to stay that in depth. Estoy muy feliz y muy agradecida por cada de ustedes mirando este video, porque por la gente uno es quien es. Ayer, bueno... Ustedes están mirando esto, no sé qué, cuál Friday. But when I had posted that we had reached 100K, every single person subscribing is a supporter. That 100K doesn't just appear there. You need that support. You need that people. And it's thanks to you guys that we made that accomplishment. So in realidad, este episode I dedicated to you guys, every single person watching this um, video in particular. Thank you for allowing me to have this opportunity. Thank you for allowing me to be where I'm at because without you, Itati isn't Itati. So in reality, the applause is to you guys. And I really, really, really want to thank you. And let's just um, hope that this year brings us a lot of opportunities and a lot of involvement with you guys. And of course, ¿cómo vamos a hacer ese involvement? Well, como les dijimos in the beginning of the video, with our chisme for muchachas. Uh, make sure to go and put in your chisme. The description is down below. Buy and go fill it out. You can be anonymous. No va a salir tu, tu nombre si no quieres. Um, remember, we are going to be reading them. So los vamos a estar leyendo. Eh, nos vas a dar un little context. What is it about? How good is this story? And you can have your chance to appear in Suelta la Lengua con Itati. Now, what we want to do is more like a phone call, so por eso les pidemos como por su número de teléfono. By the way, we're going to do it via here on, in the studio, donde les marcamos, así como en el radio. ¿Se acuerdan en la mañana cuando en el radio platicaban los chismes y todo ese rollo? Um, 
Oh my God, we should even do in the future like a three-way call. Si tú quieres saber si tu novio te engaña, we're going to do a three-way call. Oh, hell yeah. You guys need to let me know all your ideas down below the cheese submission form. Go and fill it out. Obviously, completely free. And it's an amazing opportunity for you guys to... um be on the podcast and i mean even if you're from california a ver que, you can even appear on the show depending how good that story is and how much context and how much um you have to contarnos you can even be sitting right here with me what about if one day we even have a because we're still going to continue having your favorite influencers here we're going to be having you know more interviews and just like talking chit chatting what if me and your favorite influencer were to give you a call and react to your chisme we have so many ideas for you guys, and we literally want to make this the best freaking podcast del 2024. Sorry, La Plática. No, I'm just kidding. No, they're the best Latin male podcast. Aquí está la female. Eh? Así que alístense para cuando vengan los awards de los podcasts. Pónganse las pilas y ahí nos votan a nosotros, eh? But you guys, thank you so much for tuning in in today's episode. Eh, episode 5, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Comment down below what story you guys liked the most from the ones that I shared. ¿Cuál historia más les gustó de los que compartimos? Para que we can get more in depth on the next episode. Give them a call and just know more about it. So make sure to comment down below. Also, do not forget to rate, review, and subscribe. You guys remember, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're ever driving home or you're ever, um, no, estás en una tablet, no estás en tu teléfono, o en una computadora, you can't necessarily watch it physically, the podcast. We are also on Spotify. So you can find us on Solta la Lengua um, con Itati on Spotify and obviously here on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you for being a part of this. And I hope you guys are excited for this new chapter that we're going to be having for you guys. Send us your anonymous chisme. Mándenos todo ese chismestazo allá abajo in the description down below. Follow us on social media and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye.